Well, hello there. This is MathCasts with Mr. Burko, and uh, it's uh, chapter 12.1, Exploring Tessellations with Regular and Irregular Polygons. Uh, we felt a need that uh, we needed to record our own video for this particular chapter, seeing as how there was no Khan Academy video. And so we're going to look at uh, something called tessellating or tiling. And uh, speaking of tiles, here's a picture over here to the right of uh, my feet and my daughter Clara's feet at Heritage Park today. We were in the washroom and we noticed that there was a tessellation on the floor. So if you look carefully, it's a little bit difficult to see, um, but if you look carefully at this image, you can see that there is a hexagon. I'm sorry, that's no hexagon. That is an octagon, and there's a square, a black square, in between uh, the octagons, and this is a tessellation of the floor. It's also called tiling, and, and these are tiles. They're bathroom tiles. So let's take a look at what uh, tessellation means. Here are some other examples. The reason why we were at Heritage Park today was because we were looking at quilts. It was the Festival of Quilts. And uh, up here we have a tessellated quilt. It looks like it might be an irregular polygon, a plus sign, if you will, but actually these are all squares. And so this is a regular polygon that has been tessellated. Here is another irregular polygon that has been tessellated. It looks a little bit like uh, a cone, maybe, or a fez. And then here are some diamonds, another irregular polygon that have been tessellated. Again, you've played with the color uh, to create patterns, but it's essentially the same shape that's tiling that blanket or quilt. Here is a hexagon, and the uh, hexagon is an, a nice regular polygon that can be tessellated on the plane. And then here are some triangles that if you put them together, of course, they make a square, but they're just a bunch of triangles. And finally, uh, here is a hexagon, and it is also using little equilateral triangles. So it's a nice little, nice little uh, way to tessellate the plane. So let's move on here and take a look at how you tessellate the plane. Well, when you tessellate, you're tiling essentially. You're putting a whole bunch of shapes right next to each other. And on my way out, I photographed these rectangles that when uh, you put them next to each other, they create a nicely tessellated plane. So here's how it works. You take a square, and uh, if you would like to tessellate, you create another square, and uh, you put them next to each other and you keep creating these shapes right next to each other and then all of a sudden you start to tessellate your plane. The plane is just the surface that you're working on. Now this isn't perfect, but there shouldn't be a single gap or overlapped part when you tessellate. So four is a good start, but you could have many more. And uh, you'll notice this is a regular polygon, so there's 90 degrees and uh, each corner, and that means that all the interior angles are the same, which makes it regular. And then here is what I want you to notice. If you look at the middle part here, you see 90 and 90 and 90 and 90. When you tessellate a plane, you join all of the shapes together and the points where they join together should equal 360 degrees. And that's what we have here, 360 degrees. Okay, um, now let's show you what happens if you don't have that particular uh, angle measurement in the middle there. I'm going to get rid of my tessellated squares and I'm going to bring in this little polygon that is an irregular polygon. All of the angles inside are different. We have 96 degrees, 116 on these sides, and then uh, 106 for these corners. And uh, I should note that if you're getting your protractor out, these are approximate measurements. They're not exactly measured correctly. This is sort of a demonstration, and, uh, and that's all there is. So if I try to tessellate this shape, I'll rotate these shapes. Um, so I'm transforming by rotation. Again, I shouldn't have any gaps there, um, but this is sort of limited by my mousing abilities. Uh, let's just say that those match up. I should have been able to get those to match up. And then uh, I'll rotate another one and I will attempt to tessellate this plane. You might have noticed by now that we're going to have problems because this very last slot, there's going to be some overlapping. Now you might wonder why this is happening. Well, these shapes don't fit together. And uh, one thing that mathematicians have discovered is that the reason why these are not tessellating is because they actually add up to 380 degrees. And remember, 
our magic number is 360 degrees. So if those angle measurements where you join the shapes together uh, measure 360 degrees, then you can tessellate the plane. It can be in a, an irregular polygon, it can be a regular polygon, but uh, it will work if those measurements measure 360 degrees. So thanks for joining me with uh, MathCast with Mr. Burko, and uh, we'll look at 12.2 next. As you're working through 12.1, just keep in mind that uh, the magic number is 360 degrees.